May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Good morning. My name is Kathy Stanton, and you may, as Father Tom mentioned, know me from my participation with Shepherd Song at the second service. What you may not know about me is that I've been married for 44 years to my wonderful husband, Bruce, over there. And together we have two children. We have uh, Jackie and Daniel, and between them and their beautiful spouses, they've given us three grandchildren, James seven, Samantha five, and Zoe four. I am a lover of music and books and spent my working years in both public and school libraries. Just to give you an idea of where I come from, it may also help you to know that um, my dad is a retired Episcopal priest. Uh, Father Tom has mentioned this a number of times at the second service, that we are both PKs, which stands for Preacher's Kids. Um, my dad is the Reverend Ernest Campbell, uh, retired from uh, St. Paul's in Walla Walla. He is 94 years old and has been a priest for over 70 years. Um, so one day, after my dad had finally retired, he was about 90 when he stopped preaching. And before he became 94, I asked him this question, what is a sermon? He said, a sermon is working out your faith out loud. So my talk this morning is just that. It is me working out my faith out loud. When Father Tom asked me to speak, he gave me a number of Sundays to choose from in Lent, and he kindly said, choose a Sunday with a lesson that speaks to you. It was the epistle lesson for this week in Lent that caught me. It caught me with the word reconciliation. It caught me because as I get older, I observe for myself that reconnecting with God through confession, repentance, forgiveness, prayer, blessings, and supplication is what returns me, reconciles me, repeatedly, into relationship with God, which means to me, becoming whole, or in other words, being healed. Now, I have a personal interest in healing. Um, some of you may know that I have recently, within this last year, been diagnosed with a rare form of blood cancer. It's called Baldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, and yes, I practiced how to say that. Um, it is um, an overproduction of the B cells in my body, and then my blood becomes crowded, and that is a problem. And I've had some treatment with um, a bi targeted biological called rituxan, which is still active in my body, and as of my last medical check, um, as all my faithful people who pray with me and for me will be happy to know that the cancer marker that we use, which is called immunoglobulin M, those numbers are going down, which is exactly what we want. So yes, that is a very, very good news. Um, not connected to my medical situation, but more connected to my service with music, I recently joined the Order of St. Luke, or commonly known as OSL. Um, if you haven't already heard, I'll just let you know that OSL is a healing organization dedicated to offering healing prayers in Jesus' name to all who are in need. As a discerning member when I joined, I took a three-month class called a Study of the 26 Healing Miracles of Jesus. I have now completed the course and have been inducted as a full member. My teacher for the class was Pastor Kathleen Adams. 
She is a wonderful teacher. She taught uh, over Zoom from her home in Southern California. As she led us through these lessons, she would ask, what did you notice? What came before the assigned reading? What came after? And most importantly, what were your insights? At the end of the course, before we are inducted, we're asked to summarize all of our insights. So I'm going to read to you just a tiny little part um, of my insights, and it's one of the reasons why I was so struck by the word reconciliation. So from my summary. Reviewing all my insights revealed to me that I believe that being restored to right relationship with God is the most important part of the healing stories that I studied in this class. I concluded for myself that while physical healing may come, returning to a life with God at my center is his deepest desire for me. Being restored to right relationship, returning to a life with God at my center, becoming reconciled is to be healed. So during the class, Pastor Kathleen's students and myself noticed how the people responded to Jesus and his miracles. Their reactions to being healed or witnessing a healing stood out to me. They praised him. They told everyone. They changed their lives in their homes and towns, and they even left everything and followed him. They opened themselves through faith to be reconciled to God. They returned through faith to relationship with God. And that willingness to be open is what changed them, body, mind, and spirit. What I noticed for myself is that turning back to God is what opened me up for his healing power to work in me, both inside and out. So listen again to a part of the epistle reading. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So what was Jesus doing during his ministry here on earth with us except offering us reconciliation. He was teaching, calling followers, forgiving sins, healing even on the Sabbath, and casting out demons. Through his words and by performing signs and wonders, he was reaching out to us over and over. He was telling us who God is and how much God loves us. And the people came. The people came to him. They were open to his teaching, his healing. They came with faith that he could perform miracles. They brought their friends. They came asking, crying out, begging, humbly falling on their knees, reaching out in their great need and recognizing that help was there. And when Jesus healed them, the people were amazed, filled with awe. They praised God and told everyone and spread the news about what they had seen. There were other people who also came, 
Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, many of them, not all, but many of them were closed to his teaching. They were filled with criticism and judgment. They watched Jesus looking for mistakes, hoping to find something wrong. With arms crossed and with eyes and ears closed to what was happening right before their eyes, these people were furious. They persecuted him. They plotted how to kill him. So remember my dad, the retired Episcopal priest. So in speaking to you today, I want you to know that I'm also honoring him and his years of work as a priest by quoting him. And I need to let you know that when my family was considering uh, downsizing and my parents moving into a retirement community, the question came up, what are we going to do with all of the sermons? And so I said, I'll take them. And so in my storage room, I have six boxes, big boxes of organized, cataloged sermons. Um, so from, I was able to, I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> so in this quote from one of my father's sermons, he references two additional finding stories that Jesus told in Luke ahead of the prodigal son story, the lost sheep and the lost coin. So now a quote from uh, Father Ernie Campbell's sermon from March 6, 2016, Lent 4, Year C. Yes, he will have mercy. And I quote, Jesus ran into this judgmental way of thinking when he encountered the Pharisees. They would observe something about Jesus that they judged was wrong. Just listen to them talking it over in the 15th chapter of Luke. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around Jesus to hear him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. The problem here is that the Pharisees have taken it upon themselves to determine who does and who doesn't matter to God. We have all had those days when you and I have assumed the same judgmental posture. Jesus responds to the Pharisees' judgmental attitude and ours by telling three stories. Each of the three stories focuses on the joy of the finder when something or someone that was lost is found. When the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son are found, there is call for celebration. When the shepherd finds his lost sheep, he says to his friends, rejoice with me. When the woman finds her lost coin, she invites her friends over for a party. And when the prodigal son comes home, his father orders a feast. These are all horror stories to the self-righteous because they imply that no one is outside the limits of God's mercy, end quote. So for me, the gospel lesson, the parable of the prodigal son, is a healing story because it is a story of reconciliation. Jesus told the stories of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son to hammer home the point that God wants us to be with him. Come home. Come home. Come home. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. There is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So here are four ways that I see reconciliation in the story of the prodigal son. First, 
The prodigal son had to be reconciled with himself. He confessed to himself and returned to the truth of his situation. Two, the prodigal returned to be reconciled with his father. He came home. He returned in humility and asked humbly for forgiveness. And, and he accepted the hug and the party. Third, the elder son struggled with reconciliation. Remember who Jesus' audience was. There stood the Jewish religious leaders listening. I can visualize them with arms folded in judgment. And fourth, the father in the parable not only recognized, reconciled with his wayward son, he also offered reconciliation to his elder son, reminding him to remember that he had always been with him and invited him to enter into the joy of the lost brother being found again. So for me, what it means to be reconciled to God is to accept his invitation into relationship, accept his joy, which is then to be made whole made whole, and is then to be healed. In conclusion, I know that I follow a God who heals. I claim healing for my body. I also know that I follow a God who wants reconciliation. I recognize for myself that reconciliation is something I need to actively seek that I am never completely done because I am human and I make mistakes. I choose to accept God's invitation to the party. I choose joy. I will confess. I will pray. I will ask for forgiveness and return again and again and again to God. I desire to participate in the ministry of reconciliation, along with my earthly family, my spiritual brothers and sisters, and with my heavenly Father, I will. And I invite you all to come home. Come home. Come home. Amen.